So you know how the other day we made a video about Jesperi Kotkaniemi on the Carolina Hurricanes, former Montreal Canadiens top pick, and a prospect that they drafted over guys like Brady Kachuk and Quinn Hughes. Well, today what I wanted to do was go over an idea tossed around by Montreal Hockey Now regarding another player that was in that crop of guys that the Canadians passed on at number three. Although, when you talk about the Brady Kachucks, the Quinn Hugheses, these guys are kind of in a tier of their own. They're very good players, franchise-caliber players, and definitely could have been worthy at third overall had they had the careers they're having with their teams right now in Montreal. But today's topic is going over a guy that is not as good as the Bradys or the Quinns. Let's head over to a guy taken pretty soon after Quinn Hughes at 8th overall by the Chicago Blackhawks. Because today we are talking about Adam Boquist, a player who is now on the Columbus Blue Jackets and who was taken in that same range of the draft. Now, just for the refresher, if you need to know, if you hadn't been around here for a while, 2018 saw Dalin go first, Fechnikov number two, followed up by Kotkaniemi, Kachuk, Barrett Hayton, Zadina Hughes, and then you had Boquist. Boquist in this time frame was a really interesting player because when it came to the young defenders available in the draft, obviously everybody knew that Rasmus Dahlin was going to be number one, but there was this common consensus that the rest of the D class was going to be really good too. Quinn Hughes and Boquist were both sort of seen in the same mold. Offensive guys who could rove around the offensive zone who are pretty small. Adam Boquist was noted for having a better shot than Quinn and maybe a more sort of dynamic way of attacking. Quinn was more of the rover, puck-passing type of guy playmaker on the blue line. Add to this, other defensemen like Evan Bouchard, Noah Dobson, and you had yourselves a really well-rounded top defense group in this draft. However, for Adam Boquist, he has not exhibited that same Quinn Hughes-like development path ever since being drafted. We did make a few videos. In fact, the Why I Want for Adam Boquist is the very first Why I Want video we've ever made. So there's kind of a historical tidbit there if you wanted to see that. But for Boquist, after being a really good player for the Brinash IF's junior team in 2018, he went over to London in the OHL and then made his Chicago Blackhawks debut. There, he didn't impress too much and eventually got traded over to the Columbus Blue Jackets, where last season he had 24 points in 46 games played. Five goals, 19 assists. The thing with Columbus right now is that their right side blue line, you could debate, it's pretty log jammed, and it was discussed by Frank Saravelli even further. Take a look at this tweet made on October 10th, so a few days ago. Sources say the Blue Jackets have been engaged in trade dialogue with teams in recent days in an effort to move a defenseman from their NHL roster. They've told teams they would like more flexibility at that position. Since everyone is asking for a name, the truth is the Blue Jackets are open to different possibilities as they weigh value, likely centered around Adam Boquist, Jake Bean, and to a lesser extent based on minutes, Andrew Peek. They'll likely move whomever they find gets them the most back. Now, the thing is, out of these names, Boquist, Bean, and Peak, just in my subjective opinion, I feel like Adam Boquist is a guy whose name still holds a lot of value from being one of these top prospects in 2018. We had seen just recently Jesperi Kotkaniemi get the bag with the Carolina Hurricanes, of course. We are seeing how good Hughes, Boquist, Bouchard, and these other guys have been. But for Adam Boquist, he is still in that developmental stage. Sure, he's 23 years old, but it's to a point now where you could realistically say that he's rounding out to being more or less what he's going to be at the NHL level. Sure, there is still growth to be had, and if he eventually becomes a 30, 40, maybe even a 50-point defenseman once in a few years, then that's going to be a pretty alright career. But right now, the Blue Jackets are interested in moving one of these guys. And because of this idea, you had an article published on Montreal Hockey Now, published by Marco D'Amico, saying that the Canadians are a logical fit for the Blue Jackets defensemen. The link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this article, but it opens up by saying the Canadians have been spending a lot of draft capital on D-men as of late, but may have an opportunity to snag a good one on the trade market. Sarah Vailey listed the likes of Jake Bean, Adam Peek, and Adam Boquist as one of the players that are likely going to be dangled at this moment to gain more flexibility on defense. It wouldn't be a move that would move the needle for the Canadians on online betting platforms, but making a backdoor move to acquire a defenseman as talented as Boquist could be a Kirby Doc-like boon for the Canadians. 
And here's the thing, the article doesn't mention it, but Zach Rorinsky was sidelined afterwards, so who knows how that is going to affect the entire conversation on defenders in Columbus. It should be noted, though, that Wierenski is a left-handed defenseman, and the guy that was called up to replace him was David Juracek, who is another right-handed guy. So there you go, extra names tossed around there. If you wanted to subtract Wierenski and add Juracek, then you're just adding even more to the right side of your decor, which also includes names like Eric Goodbranson, for example. The idea that Adam Boquist could be some sort of a Kirby Doc-like addition for the Canadians is a really interesting one, especially when you consider how the Canadians might be able to make it work. I mean, if you really wanted to do that, Let's scroll down and read what the Marco D'Amico piece says about the Canadians and Boquist. Be it in the form of waiver-exempt prospects, draft picks, or NHL-ready forwards, the Canadians have the cap space to absorb Boquist's $2.6 million hit without necessarily having to unload any salary onto Columbus. Acquiring a player like Boquist instantly solves their power play quarterback and defensive goal-scoring issues, as Boquist looked phenomenal running Columbus's power play last season in the absence of Orinsky. During the 21-22 season, the youngster put up 11 goals while maintaining that goal-scoring pace during the shortened 22-23 campaign. The 23-year-old would flourish under instant top-four usage in a no-pressure environment and could flourish under a coach like Martin St. Louis. Furthermore, the acquisition of the former 8th overall pick would give the organization more time to allow youngsters like Barron and Mayu to simmer in the minors, assuming neither is used as trade bait after the fact for a top-six forward. And this is something that I actually like. Like, to be honest, I guess you could say I'm being a bit biased because I've always been a fan of Boquist. I always saw Boquist mentally as neck and neck with Quinn Hughes. And of course, I mean, Quinn Hughes was one of the top scoring defensemen in the NHL last year with 70-something points. Boquist is nowhere near that. So even though things are a little bit different now, I still want to believe in the profile we had seen when Boquist was a young Swede playing in the junior SHL. The guy was a goal-scoring beast who could demand control of a power play and just rove around the offensive zone like it was nobody's business. He had pretty good edges, not Quinn Hughes level, but sort of almost there, especially when playing against the competition in his age range. And of course, the shot was definitely there too. For Boquist though, heading into the long-term future, if he's already going to get scratched in games like he was earlier this season, him, Kent Johnson, Liam Foody all scratched in the first game against the Philadelphia Flyers. If he's already in a precarious spot where now his job is even more in jeopardy because David Yurichek is going to be given an opportunity, then maybe a trade for Boquist is all right. And if you're a Columbus fan, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below what it is that you would want from the Montreal Canadiens if this trade gets done. If you're a Habs fan, what's the most you'd be willing to give up in an Adam Boquist trade? And do you even think this kind of move is appropriate? If long term you have yourselves a shuffling around with Ryan Bacher, Boquist, and then one of Mayu or Baron on the NHL blue line, where exactly does the discrepancy lead you to go? Do you place one of these guys on the left side? Do you jeopardize the jobs of one of Gooley, Harris, or even Elaine Hudson? There are already a few guys on the Canadiens blue line that you can project to being long term projects and eventual guys making the team in the long term, but where exactly does that picture go if you add one more guy in Boquist? And furthermore, is he even going to be good enough to dethrone the spot that we're automatically giving in the future to guys like Baron or Logan Mayu? Reinbacher, I feel, is probably going to be here, and he's going to stay. But behind him, where exactly does Boquist go? Who do you play him with? And what type of a style do you want him to have on this team? If he is a power play quarterback, let's say immediately, then that's great. But once Lane Hudson makes the team, who knows what job is going to be available for a power play quarterback on the first unit? Mike Matheson is doing a pretty all right job holding that down right now as well. And I kind of selfishly would prefer Matheson to stay on that top unit because I have him on my fantasy team. I think y'all already know this because I talked about it so much, but I do have a bunch of these guys on my squad this year. But either way, Adam Boquist, Montreal, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire idea? Do you think a trade is possible? Link is going to be in the description of Marco D'Amico's piece on Montreal Hockey. Now, there's a little bit more in that that we did not talk about here in the video, so click the link, read it yourself if you want that insight. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.